Here are some ideas about how chores can help prepare our children for life. Welcome to the Simply Charlotte Mason podcast. I'm Sonia Schaefer. Charlotte Mason used a wonderful phrase when she was talking about our responsibility as parents. She said that we have the responsibility to instruct our children in the art of living. I love that phrase. Today, we want to discuss how chores can help us instruct our children in that art of living. And here to join me is my friend Karen Smith. Karen, between us, we've got eight kids, yes. and we have trained them to do lots of chores over the years. Yes. So first, let's talk about why we should train our children in chores. What are some ideas that come to mind? Well, first and foremost, they help make the mess. They can help clean it up. It does teach them a sense of responsibility. Yes. yes. Yeah. And that they are, they are not you know, royalty sitting in my home and I'm the servant, they need to pitch in and help also. And I think part of it is that community. We work together to get things done. Yes. And along with that, I think there's also a sense of contributing to the community. Mm -hmm. And and that builds a sense of belonging, a stronger yes. sense of I belong here. Yes. I'm not just, you know, beside them. I'm an integral part of what they are doing here. Yes. Um, I think another reason that we trained our children in chores was to try and smooth the path to adulthood yes. in a way. Um, if you set up, well, I remember when I got married, I knew how to cook two things and that was it. And so the cooking and the cleaning and the laundry and I was working full time and all of that stuff was a big stress. Because you didn't you didn't have experience doing any of it. Not habitually. Yes. No. And so it I it took so much of my brain to think about that. It just created an environment of stress where I thought if if my kids have the habit of doing laundry, have the habit of cleaning the house, have the habit of cooking, they know how to cook already, yes. then that's going to really smooth their path into, as my daughter says, adulting. Yes, <laughs> yes. And I know for your children and my children, who are all adults now, yes. that I think that they would all agree with that, that that was a big help to them as they set up their own households. Yeah, yeah. And one more thing, I know Doug mentioned earlier when we were discussing this, how training our children in chores really is training them to have a heart for service. Yes, yes. Um, I know he mentioned a family that we know that as a family, they found ways to serve. And it may have just been mowing the lawn on the church property, but they did it as a family. So it wasn't, you go mow the lawn. They served together, and they trained their children to do that. And what a wonderful service and ministry they had because of that. That's That reminds me of another thing Charlotte talks about, is that um, the, the best thing in life is to be of use yes. to someone or something. That that gives you so much purpose. So I can see how training your child to be of service, that's another habit Charlotte talks about, taking initiative to serve other people, to help, to, to yes. be of use. One thing that was interesting is we were talking about different chores that we trained our children in. We kept deciding or trying to decide, are these chores or are they life skills? They're all life skills. <laughs> I think so. I think so. We, we talk about chores, but really we're training them in life skills. Yes. We think about cleaning a bathroom, for instance, as being a chore, but it's really a life skill on how to keep your house clean. So, you know, don't just put it in that distasteful chore category. This is something useful for life. Yeah, I think part of the art of living is being able to create an atmosphere of cleanliness mm -hmm. and um, 
being able to live to your fullest because you're eating healthful foods and you know how to mm-hmm. shop for healthful foods and plan healthful, healthful meals. Yes. Um, being able to mend your clothes, being able to... Change your tire. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, okay, let's talk about different age groups and what might be appropriate for those different age groups to learn in yes. life skills slash chores. We're going to call them life skills. Here we go. Yes. Because <laughs> they are. Now, preschool kids, my preschoolers wanted to help. Oh, kids are usually so eager to be helpful around the house. Sometimes it's difficult finding something that is at their abilities yeah. to be able to to help out. But there are things that they can do. And if we don't encourage that a desire to help now, we're going to squelch it, and that's going to make it harder to get them to help when they're yes. older. Yes, so it will. So let's encourage that, you know? Yes. One thing I did with the little ones, um, they would start just by folding a washcloth yes, when I was doing towel laundry. Something simple. And small. Yes. You know, I didn't give them the whole big but, bath towel because they would probably, you know... It would, it would use it as a cape. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But to something small they could handle. Yes. And I remember what, one of the grandchildren that we share is a little over one year old now. And do you remember getting that video of um, it was time to do laundry? And so the little, the little girl was standing on the chair in front of the washer and on a stool or a chair beside her was the basket of laundry. And she was just grinning, happy as a little clam. She would pick up one little item and and put put it it in in the washer. Yes. And pick up one little item and put it in. And somebody watching this right now or listening to this right now is going, that would drive me crazy. Well, because as moms, we just want to dump it in and be on with life. We've got other things to do. But taking that time to let that child help goes a long way into their future. Yeah, and that grin on her face, Mm -hmm. that just told it all. She felt achievement. Yes. It was wonderful. So those types of things to help, what else with preschoolers? They They can make their beds, even if it doesn't look as nicely as you would make it. They can pull the covers up and cover the bed. And they're learning those skills as they gain better mobility, those um, fine motor skills, fine motor skills like, yeah. and even large motor skills. Yeah. As they gain those, the bed will be nicer <laughs> when they do that. They, they can, can brush, absolutely they pick can, up their toys. They can pick up their toys, and many times they can even pick up their books and put them back on the shelf. They can, um, sometimes they can dust, particularly if you don't have breakables that, you know, if they accidentally knock them off the shelf. But they can dust certain areas. They can use that little whisk they, broom and, 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 and get sweep some little stuff things. into the dustpan. Mm-hmm. So there's things they, they, they can do. They can help, even if they're just standing alongside mom or dad when they're cooking a meal. They can help. They can help hand spices to them. They can at least watch Maybe they hand a carrot to mom so she can cut it up to put it into the soup or whatever she's making. Or go get the carrot out of the refrigerator because I need it. Yes, so there are are several things that they can do. Sometimes, particularly if you have a toddler and then a younger baby, the toddler might go get the washcloth so that the baby can be cleaned up or the diaper. So there's many things that can. We don't think of them as chores. Yeah. Usually. But these are ways that you can encourage your very young children to help around the house. And then that grows into more things as they get older. Opportunities to serve Mm -hmm. is what it is. I remember when my kids were in the preschool years trying to do a shift in my mentality. Um, Rather than thinking, oh, how old do they have to be before they can do such and such, I shifted to... I wonder how young they can be before they 
at least start mm-hmm. doing an, a component of it, yes. you know, like the laundry. Yes. We didn't give the one-year-old here, do the laundry, you know, but that little component could be there. Mm-hmm. And folding just the washcloths is a, a start to it. So if we think about how young can they be to encourage that, at least a component of it, Yes, that can be a change. All right, so that's preschool. Let's go to elementary age kids. At that age, I think they can start unloading the dishwasher. Oh, yes. Now, I remember when my girls unloaded the dishwasher, they couldn't reach the top cabinet to put away the plates and things. So I had them stack them neatly on the countertop, Mm -hmm. and then I would just put them away. Yes, that's one thing you can do. You can get a step stool that they can safely get up on to put things away like that. Um, they can also help clear the table mm-hmm. and, and put set those the table. dirty dishes into the dishwasher. Mm-hmm. Um, many kids at that age are also able to use a broom. So they, even if it's just a dust mop, that makes it even simpler for them. They just have to run it along the floor and then use that little whisk broom, what we've already trained them to use, to put the dust into the dustpan. And so... You can expand on those things that they started as yeah. preschoolers yes, and just increase that little skill level. And even though we are breaking this down by age, it's really more um, developmental growth. Yes. Because, you know, I have a 24-year-old special needs daughter, and she can't do some of these things mm-hmm. that a normal 24-year-old could do, but she can do many of them. And one thing that has really helped is... For example, she can do her own laundry, Mm -hmm. but I have put a sticker on the washing machine and on the dryer, and on the washer, I've labeled it. This is the sticker. You turn the knob so it points to this sticker Mm -hmm. for your clothes, and here's the one you turn it to for your towels. And on same on the dryer, turn it to this place and then push the button to start it. So she has a visual. She knows where to turn the dials. Right, because the judgment and, call is what throws her right. off. And you could do that for children who can't read yet. Yes. You could put, if, if you want them to do their own laundry or maybe do a load of towels so they can learn how to use the machines, you can put you know, a little sticker, turn the dial to here for the towels. And that, would, that could be a big help to them and taking that next step. They're quite capable of putting the things into the washing machine. But this would give them another step of being able to turn it on also. Yes, yeah, give them confidence that they're doing it right. I know one mom who puts her laundry detergent in a, I I know you can buy them in jugs that have the little spigot on them. Okay. But I know a mom who who puts hers in a, a jug, a clear glass jug, that has a different knob on it that's easier for her children to measure out the, the soap. And so that's one thing that you can do too, is think of ways that you can help your child be able to do some of these things that knock down some of those obstacles. Yeah, so they that, can do it more independently yes. and more successfully. Yes, gaining and confidence. helping you, yes. Yeah, nice. All right, let's move to middle school age. And at this point, I think we can bring in more of, well, different kinds of life skills. You know, some of the cooking, mm-hmm. you know, they've some been helping. Some more advanced cooking. But, yeah, yes. some of the cooking, um, mending and sewing on a button and things yes. like that. They things can that they might need to do when they become adults. Yes. Taking care of their houses. They can... Um, Change a light bulb. There you go. That's a good one. And, oh, okay, here, I remember someone telling us that he sold his house and moved away, and about two months later got a call from the new owner of his old house. He said, could you please come? The bushes are all overgrown now. I need you to come take care of that Didn't for know how to trim the bushes. Didn't know how to do it. Wasn't prepared. Yes. So... so that's true. Things like that. We often think of chores as being inside, but there's... but Yard work. Yard work, mm-hmm. life skills, doing yard work. If the, if the middle-aged the, child is old enough to mow the lawn safely. Yes. 
that might be a good place yes. to start. And of course, you give them instructions. Absolutely. Safety. Yeah. We're, let's talk Reminders. about how to go, how to train them mm-hmm. in chores in just a minute. Let's let's talk high school, and then we're going to talk about how to actually train any of them in any chore. Um, high school. Uh, if they're old enough to drive a car, they should know how to change the tire and yes. have practice in changing the tire yes. and checking the oil mm-hmm. and scheduling when they should check the oil regularly. And how to put gas in the car. Yes. And maybe air in the tires. So there are different things. That All the auto how, maintenance. Yes. Mm-hmm. That's something they can do. They can um, child care. Learning how to change a diaper. Yes. Somewhere in that middle school, high school Mm -hmm. levels. Changing a diaper, even first aid. Yes, basic first aid. What to do if you get cut or the child you're taking care of has an injury. Mm -hmm. What do you do? Mm -hmm. Even how to paint a wall, for goodness sake, you know? Yes. (laughs) And, you know, in those middle school and high school years, they can start taking ownership of some of those things around the house. Maybe... De- depending on the child's confidence and ability, maybe you assign them to cook one day out of the week. Mm-hmm. They plan the meal and they make it. Yep. They're I going to have to do gift. that when they leave the home. Uh, yeah, so. not just one day a week either. So <laughs> yes. it's a wonderful gift. And um, as you said, they plan the meal as well as cook it. So yes. we can, we've got our science in there as well, you know, planning nutritious meals. Well, and also it. it you can't make a recipe if you don't have the ingredients. So you have to plan that. When it's time to, to cook a meal, and if that's the point that you're saying, oh, why should I cook? You're most likely not going to cook something nutritious mm-hmm. because it's going to be whatever you can find in the house at that time. But having to plan ahead of time is a real life skill. Yes. Yes. For more than just cooking. Now, for both of us, by the time our children were in middle school and high school, our oldest were in high school, we had started traveling. Yes. On some weekends. We weren't gone all the time. Yes. But there were some weekends that we would be gone. And I, I think I can speak for both of us. I know it was true for me. I felt very comfortable yes. leaving my children to run the house. Yes. While I was on the road for a few days, mm-hmm. and and confident it would be done well. Yes, and I wouldn't come home to a mess. That they would be able to cook whatever meals they needed. They okay. would clean up after themselves, and they would still do the other household chores while I was gone. Right. They would do the laundry. They would take care of cleaning the bathrooms, vacuuming, Change dusting, the sheets on their beds, all of those all of things. It. Yes, and I knew that it would be done when I came home. And I didn't have to concern myself with that at all. And that, it it was not a selfish thing for us to do. Oh, here, you do it so I don't have to. It was very much intentional so that... Prepare them for their own households. Exactly. When they move out, they need to be able to do those things. Not and learn them be, when they move out. Exactly, yeah. Have it be a second nature to them mm-hmm. so they don't have all that stress of, oh, I've got to learn how to do this. Or, oh, I have to remember how to do this. It's like, oh, yeah, that's easy. I've done that for a long time. I know yes. how to do that. I know how to do that. They didn't have to think about it. Yes. We had already set those rails for them. Yes, yeah. All right, so let's real quick talk about how to train a child in a life skill or a chore. And I like to go through a five-step process mm-hmm. very simply. Step number one, I do it as the parent, and the child watches me. And that can start when they're in preschool age. Oh, yes. And they watch you whether you know it or not. (laughs) Which brings up an interesting point. I know some moms who save all the cleaning and chores until the children are in bed. Yes. But then the kids are not watching and seeing how these things are done. So that might be sabotaging yourself. If you do that. Anyway, step one, they watch you. Step two, I as the parent do it and they help me. Yes. And again, it can start in preschool. Mm -hmm. Um, Step three then, now we're going to make the shift when the child is ready. Now the child is going to take the lead. They're going to do it and I'm going to help them. 
So I'll help as you need it, but mm-hmm. you take the lead and do what you can do. And then step four, the child will do it and I will watch them. So it's just, you know, the exact reverse yes. of the process yes. we had before. So now you do it and I'm going to watch you. So I'm, I'm here if you need me, but I think you can do it yourself. And then step five is they do the chore and afterward you go inspect it. Yes. Because let's be honest, you, you get what you inspect, you know? Yes. Yes. If you allow your children to do sloppy work or maybe you train them to do it well, but if you don't keep holding them accountable for how well to do it, their work will get sloppy because they are just like us. They are lazy. They want to do the least amount of work as possible to get the job done. As we do. Yes. I love how you said they're just like us. Just like us. That's human nature. Yes. It's it's easy to let it slide if you're not held accountable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that fifth step is turning it over to them, holding them accountable for it, responsible for it, and inspecting that work. Yes. to help them keep it up to the standard that you think will best equip them for adult life, for the art of living. Yes. I love that. Thanks. If you enjoyed this podcast, be sure to subscribe through iTunes, Google Play, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, or your favorite podcast app so you don't miss an episode. You can also subscribe to the audio version, or you can read the blog post on our website at simplycharlottemason.com. All of those links will be in the notes for you. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time.